as you may know, the Jewish religion, the religious tradition, mm -hmm. uh, is based on the Bible or what we call the Hebrew Bible. The, uh, uh, is that is that all of the Old Testament or just the first five books? Well, no, that's the, well, actually, it's all of the Old Testament. Okay, that is Christians call it the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. they have a New Testament. Yes, and Jews call it the Hebrew Bible yeah. or Tanakh, which is an acronym for the five books of Moses right. and the prophets and the so-called writings like Psalms okay. and Proverbs and the like. So that's the 24 books of the Hebrew Bible. But Jewish religious tradition rests uh, no less significantly on what we call the oral Torah, or the oral teaching, mm -hmm. which uh, is mo perhaps the most famous compendium of that is the Talmud, which was compiled about 1,500 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the core document of the Talmud is the Mishnah, which was compiled almost 2,000 years ago, around the year 200. And there's a clear statement in the Mishnah that if a woman is having difficulty in childbirth and her life is at risk, then the fetus should be killed in order to rest, save her life because her life takes precedence. Can I ask this question? Um, I, I could be wrong. I know, look, I'm not well-versed in this area of study, but I've heard people say that there is something in the Old Testament about drinking drinking a potion to abort a baby or drinking a drinking a poison for the specific purpose of aborting the baby. Is that what we're talking about or is that, am I just talking through a hole in my head? I don't remember such a thing, okay. certainly right. not in the Old Testament. The Talmud does talk about a woman taking a potion as a contraceptive measure. Okay, all right. And uh, it's not entirely clear whether that's permanent something that will render her uh, incapable of further fertility, right. or it's something temporary. It seems more to be a t permanent measure and is uh, and not entirely prohibited, but that's another matter. Okay, yep, yep. So uh, what we're talking about here is actually uh, uh, physically, you know, mo uh, m the midwife moving into the womb and uh, cutting the fetus to, to set it loose and to avoid... Uh, the death probably of both. It's the kind of birth where the it's stuck. So um, would that imply, therefore, that would be more during an actual childbirth or any time in the gestation period? Well, that clause is during childbirth. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's even you have a full-term fetus. And then the next clause says once it has emerged or is almost emerged, or mostly emerged, and considered born, born, then it's no longer permissible to do that. Right. Because it's a live person and has equal standing with the woman. Literally the second it is out of the mother? Well, there's actually, as you will find in Talmudic discussions, a discussion about what point, whether the head is out, or most of the, <laughs> most of the fetus, it's yeah. some point in the process, before the birth is complete, yeah. where it's considered born. Okay. And that's a cutoff line. Like there's a 50-50 line. When the baby's 52% out, it's that's the debate. Something like that. Right. Right. Wow. And so that so so the approach in that instance is that the woman's life is is, is be all and end all until the baby is born. Right. Okay. So, so prior prior to that, the baby is not considered a person, or the, the word used there is the Hebrew word nefesh, which is translated probably as soul or person. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't yet acquire that status until birth. So that's clearly distinct from the, let's say, the Catholic position, mm. which we mentioned earlier.